Welcome to the show. I'm Mehdi Hassan. If you've been watching Fox recently, well, first, sorry. But second, you might have noticed something has come to rival Hunter Biden, the southern border and violent crime as the top story of the moment. Hmm. What could it be? The media mob caught in yet another lie over the uh, COVID lab leak theory. The lab leak theory. That COVID lab leak theory. Lab leak yes. is, is what's being described. Lab leak. Which is why this lab leak story is such a big deal. Lab leak? What are they talking about? Well, it all starts with this recent Wall Street Journal reporting that lab leak most likely origin of COVID-19 pandemic energy department now says. The U.S. Energy Department has concluded that the COVID pandemic most likely arose from a laboratory leak, according to a classified intelligence report recently provided to the White House and key members of Congress. That's the story, an intelligence assessment that COVID came from a lab rather than from an animal infecting a human in a marketplace, a natural origin, as has been the conventional wisdom and main scientific explanation these past three years. And it's not just the Department of Energy. FBI Director Christopher Wray spoke about his agency's assessment just days after the big Wall Street Journal piece came out. The FBI has for quite some time now assessed that the origins of the pandemic are most likely a potential lab incident in Wuhan. He said that, surprise, on Fox. So why is right-wing media so big on lab leak? Why, after years of downplaying the pandemic, do they even care about COVID's origin? How does this story fit into the Fox business model of 24-7 outrage and fear-mongering? Because the idea that COVID somehow leaked out of a Chinese lab rather than from an animal infecting a human, that idea has become a rallying cry on the right, a cudgel with which to beat scientists, the liberal media, China, and anyone else who gets in their way. But not just the right. You also have people who call themselves centrists, who see themselves as truth-tellers, independent thinkers, berating their fellow liberals. When the Wall Street Journal story came out, I got into a bit of a Twitter back and forth with 538 editor, data guy, and noted armchair epidemiologist Nate Silva, after he grandly claimed that scientists suppressed discussion of where the virus came from, that they should be embarrassed. That is not the case, as I will demonstrate today. But sadly, it's become a very popular view among the public at large. Today, Americans are more likely to believe that COVID came from a lab rather than from an animal infecting a human, even though most studies, as I'll demonstrate, suggest the opposite, that it is natural origin. So how did we get here? Were we lied to? And on what basis are the proponents of the lab leak theory already declaring victory in the debate over the origins of COVID? Today, I want to look at, examine, and debunk Yes, debunk five of the main myths which in recent days have come to define the lab leak theory and the whole thorny debate over COVID's origins. Let's start with myth number one, that intelligence agencies now agree it was a lab leak. Jubilant lab leakers point to the Wall Street Journal reporting, which says that both the Energy Department and the FBI have concluded that COVID likely came from a lab. But what else is in that intel report? Down in the third paragraph, the journal notes four other government agencies, along with a national intelligence panel, still judge that it was likely the result of a natural transmission, and two are undecided. So, to be clear, eight intelligence agencies, four of them say natural origin, two say lab leak, two, including the CIA, dunno, undecided. Now, I'm not Nate Silver. I'm not a data guy. I'm not good at math. But last time I checked, Four is a bigger number than two. Two of our intelligence agencies say lab leak. Four say no lab leak, natural origin. Funny that the lab leakers don't talk much about that. And here's something else they tend not to mention, a key point buried almost five paragraphs down in that journal article. Quote, the Energy Department made its judgment with low confidence, according to people who have read the classified report. Low confidence is not case closed. Now, to be fair, the four agencies who say natural origin also say it with low confidence. The intelligence is not definitive on any of this. And yeah, the FBI says it was a lab leak with moderate confidence. But hold on, Republicans are suddenly fans of, believers in the FBI? The same agency they have been telling us for six months is a corrupt deep state vessel that needs abolishing? How convenient. Look, the big point here is that there is no consensus. Listen to National Security Council spokesman John Kirby speaking last week. There is not a consensus right now 
in the U.S. government about exactly how COVID started. Uh, there is just not an intelligence community consensus. Sorry, U.S. intelligence hasn't concluded it's a lab leak. Lab leakers, take off your party hats and put away your confetti. There is no victory here. Next up, myth number two. It was never about bioweapons, they say. Lab leakers want you to believe that their argument has always been a very reasonable and very narrow one. They want you to forget that in 2020 there were tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorists and deranged anti-China hawks who believed the evil Chinese Communist Party had deliberately engineered a COVID bioweapon in a Wuhan military lab and then purposefully unleashed it on the rest of the world. They say that it was the liberal media that conflated bonkers conspiracies about a Chinese bioweapon with legitimate scientific concerns about an accidental lab leak. Those legitimate concerns, to be clear, being either a natural virus being brought into the Wuhan Institute of Virology and infecting workers there because of poor safety practices, or being modified in that lab through so-called gain-of-function experiments that strengthen a virus in order to study it, and then again accidentally infecting workers there. As conservative writer Isaac Shaw noted in a recent piece for Mediaite, quote, the record, sh the record, he said, shows that it's the media that insisted on the bioweapon conflation. Yeah, nice try. Some of us have longer memories than, I don't know, two weeks. Because if you go back to the earliest months of the pandemic, in early 2020, this is what a lot of lab leak discussions actually sounded like. Obviously, the question of their covert biological weapons program should come into play here. Your point you is this. there are no coincidences. If, there, if the level well, four that was built by the French for them in 2007 uh, is in Wuhan, then, then th that leads to certain suspicions. Absolutely. It probably is a chi -com laboratory experiment that, that is in the process of being weaponized. But then a bioweapon sold in 2015 by Obama at North Carolina University to China got released. And scientists looked at it and said it's a bioweapon, and it killed quite a few people. They're operating and conducting activities that are inconsistent with their capacity to secure those facilities. And the risk of bioweapons and bioterror emanating from this region is very real. A lot of the talk was about Chinese bioweapons. Now, was Republican senator and noted China hawk Tom Cotton misrepresented and wrongly mocked by some in the media when he said in early 2020 that COVID could have come out of a lab in Wuhan? Sure. Media organizations like The Washington Post and Vox have rightly corrected or clarified some of their reporting on Cotton from that time. But did Cotton help his own case with repeated and hyperbolic and unscientific references to super labs and Chernobyl? I mean, it wasn't helpful, especially at a time when the media was relying on a scientific consensus that COVID was natural in origin and that no labs were involved. What was the media supposed to do? Have on, as guests, noted scientific experts like, I don't know, Steve Bannon to make the case for Lab League? Also, I have to add here, was the media supposed to ignore the blatant and shameless anti-Chinese racism motivating and driving a lot of people on the right, a lot of the same people who were pushing Lab Leak, like the then president? You can pretend now that racism had nothing to do with this scientific debate. But again, some of us have longer memories. Roll the tape. Coronavirus, right? <laughs> Kung flu, yeah. <laughs> Kung flu. Look, when people now say to me, why weren't you, why weren't the liberal media covering the lab leak theory in 2020, the first thing you have to ask is, which version of the lab leak theory? Bioweapons? The crazy claim that every U.S. intelligence agency and every respected scientist on Earth has dismissed that theory? The one that clearly was doing the rounds on the right at the time, as opposed to the accidental release theory that we're all talking about now. Back then, a quarter of Americans in April of 2020, right at the start of the pandemic, already believed without any evidence that COVID was developed intentionally in a lab. Wonder where they got that idea from. In fact, it even worried the Office of the Director of National Intelligence at the time, run by a far-right acting Trump appointee. So much so that they felt the need to put out a statement denying that COVID-19 was man-made or genetically modified. So don't gaslight us. Don't tell us today that this was never about bioweapon conspiracies. It was just about gain-of-function research, especially because just last week, in the wake of the Wall Street Journal revelations, bioweapons made a comeback. Check out Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene's tweet, calling COVID the man-made bioweapon from China. Right there, in black and white. 
And this is how Tucker Carlson, the most watched conservative host on cable news, reported on the journal story. The Wall Street Journal reported that the Biden administration has finally concluded that, yes, COVID was not naturally occurring. No, the virus came from a Chinese military lab where it was created. That's the determination of the Department of Energy based on new intelligence that, of course, everyone already had. In fact, one of the very first things we knew about COVID was that it was an engineered virus that escaped somehow, intentionally or not, from a Chinese military biolab in Wuhan. None of that is true. They haven't finally concluded it's not naturally occurring. It didn't come from a Chinese military lab, and it wasn't engineered. A reminder, as the journal itself says, right down in its 12th paragraph, the intelligence update reaffirmed an existing consensus between them that COVID-19 wasn't the result of a Chinese biological weapons program. I don't know what's worse, that the bioweapons talking point just won't die, or that the more respectable lab leak folks keep pretending that this whole debate, the legitimate debate over the dangers of gain-of-function research, wasn't hijacked by the bioweapons theory from the very beginning, and isn't still being hijacked by the bioweapons folks. It is. Next up, myth number three, the media suppressed the lab leak theory. Yes, it's all the fault of the evil, censorious, pro-China liberal media. Even liberal media folks are making this ridiculous accusation. People like Jonathan Chait of New York Magazine, who last week called out yours truly while accusing the press of inventing a non-existent consensus on the scientific origins of COVID. This isn't new criticism. New York Times opinion columnist, conservative Brett Stevens, accused the media, both social and mainstream, as he put it, of using, quote, censorship and vilification in refusing to take the lab leak theory seriously. Now, in 2021, Facebook did institute a policy to remove claims that COVID is man-made or manufactured. But three months later, they reversed the policy after consulting public health experts. In hindsight, I get why people are mad at Facebook. But Facebook isn't the media, and much like with Twitter and Hunter Biden's laptop, their policy did nothing to actually suppress media coverage of the story. I mean, if the media was suppressing the lab leak theory, refusing to discuss it or entertain it as a plausible alternative to natural origins, if it was a media cover-up across the board, then tell me, what do you make of things like this? Two op-eds in major newspapers from April 2020, including one from Sir Suppression himself, Tom Cotton, discussing the lab leak theory. Articles from the Philadelphia Inquirer, Boston Magazine, Business Insider, and yes, the New York Times, among many others, discussing the possibility of a lab leak. You even had a cover story, a cover story, in that bastion of East Coast liberalism, New York Magazine, making the case for the lab leak theory in January of 2021, less than a year into the pandemic. Media suppression, you say? And by the way, all of the headlines I just showed you were from before President Biden himself called for an assessment into the origins of COVID in the spring of 2021, which has led to even more media coverage of the lab leak theory, ill-defined as it is, ever since. It wasn't just the print press either. It was all on mainstream TV. U.S. intelligence is investigating other theories, including whether the virus was accidentally released by a lab a few miles away that had been researching pathogens carried by bats. I am of the point of view that I still think the most likely uh, etiology of this pathogen in Wuhan was a, from a laboratory, um, you know, escaped. The lab leak theory, the fact that this could have been an, ex an accident out of that lab is never going to be fully dispelled, and the WHO shouldn't walk away from that. That so easily. Scientists are willing to investigate the lab leak theory. The current evidence is all circumstantial and it is consistent of both a natural and a lab origin. I think I recognize that last TV anchor hosting a debate on this network on the lab leak theory nearly two years ago. So I'm sorry, but I'm just a little confused. Is this media suppression? Three years of reporting on the lab leak theory? Listen, if you want to be critical of a too-quick dismissal of the lab leak theory in the earliest days of the pandemic, fine. But that's literally where the scientific consensus was at the time, which is what I'm about to get to next. To say that talk of an accidental lab leak was totally suppressed was somehow verboten, simply not talked about at all? Sorry, that is demonstrably false. Myth number four. The science now says it was a lab leak. The science has shifted, they say. Look. Back in March of 2020, The Lancet published an open letter from more than two dozen eminent scientists, experts on viruses and epidemiology that condemned, quote, conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. 
At the time, key point, at the time, all of the peer-reviewed literature analyzing the virus concluded that it had a natural origin, all while the right wing was stoking debunked bioweapon theories and Trump was screaming China virus. So you could understand the sentiment of that letter and you could understand the context in which it was written. That said, it clearly wasn't a conspiracy theory to wonder about the possibility of a virus accidentally escaping from a lab. Some leading virologists did wonder about it. In January 2020, a virologist from Scripps, Christian Anderson, emailed Dr. Anthony Fauci about the virus, noting, quote, some of the features potentially look engineered and that he and his colleagues all find the genome inconsistent with expectations from evolutionary theory. And the next year, in May of 2021, a group of more than a dozen scientists, including evolutionary biologist Michael Warraby, published a peer-reviewed letter in Science calling for more investigations into COVID-19's origins and saying natural origins and accidental lab leak both remained viable theories. But here's where it gets interesting. Both of those scientists I just mentioned, Anderson and Warraby, who initially found a lab leak scenario plausible, both ended up coming to the opposite conclusion, coming down in favor of natural origins after they studied the virus further. In fact, last summer, both Warraby and Anderson were co-authors on two, two major peer-reviewed studies looking at the earliest cases of COVID-infected patients in Wuhan, which concluded that the emergence of SARS-CoV-2 occurred through the live wildlife trade in China, and that the wet market in Wuhan was the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. There's been nothing equivalent to that on the lab leak theory side of the debate. There just hasn't. So when the Wall Street Journal publishes an op-ed, as it did the other day, headlined, Why Scientists Got the COVID Lab Leak Wrong, that headline is just plain wrong. They didn't. As Warraby told the Associated Press last week in the wake of that Wall Street Journal reporting, quote, the scientific literature contains essentially nothing but original research articles that support a natural origin of this virus pandemic. In fact, the entire lab leak theory is built not on hard evidence, not on some smoking gun, but on circumstantial stuff and on questions, not answers. For example, why haven't scientists discovered yet the exact animal from which the virus crossed into humans if COVID was natural in origin? That's the question. Well, forgive me, but so what? As an article in Slate earlier this year pointed out, there may not be a conclusive answer for a while. It took 29 years to definitively identify the source of Ebola, 26 years for HIV AIDS and 15 years for SARS. So a lack of an identifiable source right now is not automatic evidence that it must have been a lab leak. In fact, the history of pandemics is a history of viruses crossing over from animals to humans, not crossing out of labs and into humans. Now, that's not to say accidents don't happen at labs. They happen plenty. They just haven't yet resulted in wider outbreaks that we know of. But that leads to another question. Did scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology run the sort of gain-of-function experiments that could have ended up creating something like COVID? Now, that is a good question. They actually applied for a grant to run these experiments in 2018, but were denied. So, given China's lack of transparency, which is a big reason we're still arguing about the origins of COVID, by the way, it could have happened in secret. No way to know. But let's suppose it did. Say scientists accidentally created COVID-19 and a lab worker got infected. You would expect the earliest cases of COVID to be centered around the lab and its surrounding neighborhood. Yet as Warraby's study in science showed, all the earliest cases of COVID-19 are concentrated on the other side of the city, seven miles away as the crow flies, nine miles by foot on the other side of a river in the illegal wet market that sold exactly the kind of animals that led to the outbreak of SARS 20 years ago. So is it possible that it leaked from a lab? Sure. But likely? More likely than the wet market? Come on, that entire premise continues to strain credulity, which is why natural origins is still the number one theory in the actual scientific literature. And finally, myth number five. The lab leakers have been vindicated. Vindicated by the Wall Street Journal reporting. It's difficult to overstate just how pleased with themselves the right-wing lab leak proponents have been in recent weeks, how loudly and wrongly they have claimed victory. The government's finally admitting that COVID originated in the lab in Wuhan. And now, you know, three years on, I think most Americans recognize that it almost certainly came from that laboratory. I'm not one for vindication. 
But this week it was good to see the Department of Energy finally conclude that the damn virus came from the lab in Wuhan. Vindication. Sorry, folks, you haven't been vindicated. The government hasn't admitted anything, and COVID didn't almost certainly come from a lab. What's so interesting is that they're now claiming victory and suggesting the lab leak theory is a fact because of two intelligence assessments, which, again, represent a minority of the intelligence community's findings on this matter. And yet, as the Wall Street Journal itself reported about one assessment, quote, U.S. officials declined to give details on the fresh intelligence and analysis that led the Energy Department to change its position. In other words, until that updated intel report is declassified, there's no way to say for sure what made them lean towards a lab origin. But sources have given CNN some insight. Three people familiar with the intel findings tell CNN the Department of Energy's shift was based in part on information about research being conducted at the Chinese Centers for Disease Control in Wuhan, China, which was studying a coronavirus variant around the time of the outbreak. Hold on. Hold on. The Chinese Centers for Disease Control. That is an entirely different lab than the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the lab at the center of the lab leak theory, the place lab leak proponents have talked about nonstop since day one. Have you seen anything at this point that gives you a high degree of confidence that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was the origin of this virus? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. China's only biosafety level four super laboratory that researches human infectious diseases. Have you seen anything that gives you high confidence that it originated in that Wuhan lab? Martha, there's enormous evidence that that's where this began. You can't, as writer Jonathan Katz points out in his Substack, point to an intel assessment about a totally different lab and then claim vindication for your theory. Oh, and let's say the Energy Department got it right, that the leak did come from the Wuhan CDC rather than the Institute of Virology. You know what kind of work is not done at that CDC, according to virologist Angela Rasmussen? Yeah, gain-of-function research. It's not done there. The Energy Department assessment, if accurate, actually blows up the theory that lab leakers have been pushing for three straight years. Sorry, you don't get to move the goalposts and tell yourself you were right all along. So, to recap, the intelligence community as a whole doesn't say it was a lab leak. The bioweapons folks are still hijacking this entire debate. The media made mistakes but didn't unfairly or conspiratorially suppress this story. Scientific studies taken as a whole still don't back the lab leak theory. And there hasn't been any vindication for the proponents of it. Quite the opposite. Now, does that mean the lab leak theory is therefore false? No, not at all. It could well have leaked out of a lab in Wuhan, sure. I'm not saying it definitively didn't, and nor are the scientists who say they think it came out of the wet market, that it was natural in origin. They just want to see hard evidence for the lab leak theory, as do I. We haven't seen any yet, and if we eventually do, then I'll say, sure, I was wrong on this, as were most of the scientists I trusted. But in the meantime, I have to ask, why this obsession? with trying, and again failing, to prove it came out of a lab. Why should we even care? Some people say, well, it's because we want to learn from what went wrong, improve safety procedures at biolabs and avoid another pandemic, which we should all want. But come on, you want me to believe that's what's driving this? Really? Concern about another pandemic? So many of the people who don't give a damn about this pandemic, who said COVID was like the flu, they care about biosafety and biosecurity? They care about preventing another pandemic? Yeah, OK. Look, let's be clear. At a time when the U.S. death toll from COVID stands at more than a million people and counting, when, according to The New York Times, the daily death toll right now is nearly 400 a day, when long COVID continues to be an unresolved, perhaps unresolvable problem for tens of millions of Americans, when even more millions of Americans continue to lack access to basic health care, when air filtration remains a pipe dream for most public schools and public buildings, when congressional funding has been cut off for vaccine research and distribution and for pandemic preparedness, when our vaccine booster rates are shamefully among the lowest in the Western world. The idea that we should be putting all of our time, energy and attention, our congressional hearings and investigations into whether or not COVID came out of a biolab or a wet market more than three years ago, more than 7,000 miles away, is, I'm sorry, as ridiculously and pointlessly absurd as it is nakedly and dishonestly cynical.
We're going to take a short break, and then we're going to pick up this story with Dr. Peter Hotez, a virologist who has been at the forefront of this effort to explain the COVID pandemic to the general public. Do not go away.